Hello everyone, my name is Lola from afropotlock.com. It's nice seeing you once again. I know it's been a long time. Okay, I'm back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful chicken stuffed breaded bread. It's fresh from the oven and it's very easy to make. So let's go right into the kitchen and let's get started. I'm going to be using salt, vitamin C powder, yeast, sugar melted butter one cup of milk one cup of water two eggs and of course bread flour so to my flour i'm going to be adding the sugar yeast vitamin c powder and you can see the reason for that in my previous bread video i've also put a link to that in the description box i'll also be adding the salt at this point, I'm going to be mixing all these dry ingredients together until it's very well combined. Once it's combined, just create a little hole at the middle. And to that hole, I'm going to be adding the water, milk, eggs, and the melted butter. Then I'm going to be using my spatula to mix this together until all the wet ingredients has been incorporated into the dry ingredients. So at this point, the dough is getting together and um, the spatula cannot do the work again. I'll just be using my hand to mix everything together until a soft, wet and sticky dough is formed. So at this point, I'm going to be transferring this dough on a well-floured work surface and I'm going to continue to knead the bread until it becomes very smooth and elastic. And this should take about 10 minutes or thereabouts. So in between the kneading process, the dough can become a little sticky. If that happens, just continue to sprinkle a little bit of flour at a time and continue to work on it until it becomes no more sticky. So now I've been working on this dough for about 10 minutes and it has become so elastic and smooth. And one way to be sure your dough is ready is just to stretch it a little bit it should stretch for a little while before it breaks apart, as you can see here. At this point, I'll just take my bowl and I'm going to grease it with some butter. Once that is done, I'll place the dough inside the bowl and I'll make sure the butter covers all the surface of the dough. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to ensure that the dough doesn't stick to the bowl. Also, it's going to prevent the dough from forming a crust after proofing it. Right now, I'm just going to be covering the dough with a plastic wrap and I'm going to be leaving it in a warm place to proof for about an hour or till the dough has risen up to about twice or almost three times its original size. So while the dough is proofing, I'm going to introduce to you the ingredients I'm going to be using for the stuffing. I'm going to be using three varieties of bell peppers. I'm going to be using the green, red, and yellow. Any color combination of these bell peppers will work just fine. I'll also be using two medium-sized fresh tomatoes, one habanero pepper, and one bulb of onion. So the next thing I did was just to dice all this and lest I forget, I'm also going to be using a little bit of ginger. For my spices, I'll just be using salt, curry powder and black pepper. So here I've got some boiled chicken breast and as a substitute, you can use any boiled chicken parts of your choice as long as it is boneless. Finally, I have my all-purpose flour together with some water and I'm going to be mixing this together and this is going to be used to thicken up the filling. So let's go ahead and put all this together. 
the first thing i'm going to do here is just to preheat a little bit of oil in my pan and once the oil is hot i'm going to be adding the diced onion i'm going to be stir frying this onion until it becomes translucent at this point i'm going to be adding the minced habanero pepper i'll stir together Then I'm going to be grating in my ginger. Once again, I'm going to be giving it a very good mix. So it's now time to add the bell peppers and the tomatoes. And I'm adding this at this point so that it can wilt a little bit before I add the chicken. So after about three minutes of wilting the peppers, I'm going to be adding the chicken. And you want to make sure that you cut the chicken into bits and pieces so that by the time you stir it together, everything will be broken apart. Now I'm done shredding my chicken inside the pot and the next thing I'm going to do is just to add my spices which is the black pepper, salt and curry powder. You can also add your own choice of seasoning to this. It's all well and good. I'll be adding a little bit of water to this. Then I'm going to cover it and I'll leave it to cook for about 5 minutes or thereabouts. It's also very important to steer this in between the cooking process so that everything can be evenly cooked. Also, you can adjust the seasoning at this point if necessary. So while that is cooking, I'm going to be mixing the flour together with the water. I'll start by adding a little water first so that I can break any lumps in the flour. Once there are no more lumps in the flour, I will now be adding the remaining water. I'll just mix this together once again. So the filling has been cooking for about 5 minutes now. I'm just going to be adding the flour mixture. Mix it together thoroughly until everything is well combined. So as you can see, this filling is moist but not wet. You want it to be like this because if it's wet, your bread is going to come out soggy. At the same time, you don't want it too dry because if it's too dry, definitely you are not going to enjoy the whole thing. So you want it a little moist, but definitely not wet. Now cover this up and allow it to simmer for a couple of minutes before taking it off the heat. So this dough has been resting for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, my house is a little cold today, so it took about 15 minutes extra for it to attain its full size. So right now, I'm just going to be punching down the dough to remove the excess trapped air. Once that is done, I'll be transferring the dough again to my floured work surface. I'll be dividing the dough into four equal parts and I'll be making four loaves from this. Now take the dough one at a time and place it again on a floured work surface. Then use your rolling pin to roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thickness or a little less than that. So the reason for having to roll out this dough to about a quarter of an inch is just because there is a filling inside of it. If the dough is too thick, it's going to take a longer time to cook and it might even burn before it gets done and you don't want a half baked bread. So try as much as you can to make sure you roll it as flat as you can. So now this dough has been well rolled out to my satisfaction. At this point, I'm just going to be lifting it up and placing it on a parchment paper. And this parchment paper is going to make it easier for me to lift the dough up after I stuff it with my stuffing. So right now, I'm going to be filling the rolled out dough with my stuffing. And I'm going to be adding a generous amount of stuffing inside the dough. 
now i'm going to be using a pizza cutter a knife can also work well for this i'm going to be using it to make some cuttings at both sides of this dough i'm going to be cutting the sides into strips and each of these strips should be about half of an inch wide a little more or less depending on your preference but it shouldn't be too wide and it shouldn't be too narrow also, I'm going to make sure that each side have equal amounts of cutting. In that way, it's going to make the braiding easier for me and I'm not going to be left with an extra strip with nothing to do with it. After doing that, the next thing to do is to fold the top of this dough over the filling. Place one of the strips on one side over the filling making sure that the filling is well secured then place another strip from the opposite side over the previous one and continue to do this over and over again until you get to the bottom of the dough now when you are almost getting to the bottom of the dough Make sure you leave out two strips from both sides, making four, two on one side and two on the other side. Then fold the leftover dough on top of the filling. After that, you can now crisscross the remaining strips. Then pinch the dough together to secure it and that is it. So now that is done, I'm just going to be lifting up this dough with the parchment paper inside my baking pan. Now, it's very important to use a parchment paper for two reasons. Number one, it's going to allow you to easily lift up the dough inside the pan. And number two, it's going to prevent the dough from burning easily when you put it inside the oven. So now I'm just going to be covering this with a plastic wrap and I'm going to be leaving it in a warm place to rise again for another 30 minutes. So this dough has been resting for 30 minutes now. It's now time to pop it inside our oven and I'm going to be putting it in a 350 degrees preheated oven to cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. And as you can see, I have a pan of boiling water here. It's very important to use this because it's going to allow the bread to cook well on the inside before forming a crust on the outside. So in between the baking process, I'm just going to rotate the bread so that the bread can bake evenly. So right now I'm going to be putting this back into the oven and I'll leave it to bake until it's done. So right now the bread is done and I'm just going to be testing it with a skewer. I don't know if you can see this but it appears a little wet and that is okay because of the filling but if you notice it comes out a little sticky then you have to return the bread back into the oven to bake it for a little bit more. So while the bread is still hot I'm going to be rubbing it with some butter just to give it a soft and shiny crust. I'm just going to be using my brush to make sure it gets to every corner. So right now the bread has cooled down and I'm just going to cut it open so you can see how it looks like on the inside. It looks very soft and moist and it tastes absolutely delicious. And that is it again for today. Thank you all for spending your time with me. The full ingredients for today's recipe can be found at afropotluck.com. Until next time, I'll talk to you shortly. Enjoy. <music>